Hey guys, welcome back to Ed's Garage. Today I'm going to be designing an enclosure for my secondary screen on my Hummer H3. Uh, so this is the screen that I got for Christmas. Thank you, wife. Uh, <laughs> but I need an enclosure because it's going to sit on the dashboard uh, behind the steering wheel. And it's basically going to act as almost like a digital instrument cluster. But I'm also going to have some other things in there. Uh, just basically connect it to uh, Torque Pro and have some uh, statistics come up on the screen. Maybe uh, transmission temperature, that sort of thing. I do already have another little screen in the vehicle on the headliner, uh, so I'm going to kind of share some of the workload between those two. Uh, so to start, I've gone ahead and I've measured out the dashboard, and I've used uh, one of these little sort of gauge things to kind of get the contours of the dash. So this is, for instance, the left side, um, and this, of course, is the front edge, uh, the back edge, and the right side. Um, and then I've also basically just taken some measurements um, of the dashboard at different spots uh, just to get an idea uh, and have an I you know have a, a reference to work from so on this screen here you can see I'm, I'm doing the actual 3d rendering for the enclosure itself uh, so I want to have a couple of USB ports one on either side uh, this basically represents the stereo unit or the screen unit um, and then the back right now is open uh, but yeah, I'll enclose that. But that is the bracket to sort of level it all. So now I've got to cut out those contours and uh, make it all fit. So we'll do that and get back. To it. All right, so I figured the, the easiest way to do this was basically just to trace out the contour on a piece of paper uh, and then copy it onto um, this 3D rendering software. Uh, there's probably another way to do it. Uh, I could have actually converted this to like a three-dimensional file. Uh, that I could open up on here, but I found that uh, just using the piece of paper actually did the trick uh, nice and quickly. So I've gone ahead and traced out the contour and I just need to um, cut it out of my little adapter plate. Uh, so I'm just going to do that real quick. And that should kill it off here. I'm just going to go back uh, the 10 millimeters of the thickness of that wall. And there we go. So now I can get rid of the contour line and I'm left with a nice rounded front end which should fit perfectly on that section of dash or at least very very close so now I'm going to do the same thing with the right left and rear sides all right so there we go so I've traced off the image that I had over here and I made sure of course to uh, when I was tracing the image to basically zoom in to the image to the right dimension uh, if that makes any sense so the little gauge thing that I was using actually has measurements on it so I was able to sort of zoom in to the image uh, and then use my caliper to figure out uh, you know that each one of the centimeters was accurate and then I did the same thing on here as well I uh, first measured out how many millimeters across this was uh, and then measured it out on the screen um, using the uh, using a ruler on the screen so I know that this is pretty much the accurate dimensions and I'm going to go ahead and draw out uh, that line I could just barely see my mouse under the paper here uh, so hopefully I get it uh, pretty accurate. Here we go. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. So you can see where our two lines are pretty close to the same. Now, of course, I'll measure this. Um, you know, I can actually use the, the software to measure that distance and then I can measure it again on the dashboard just to make sure it's uh, pretty accurate. So, all right, so that's the left side and I got to do the right side. All right, and after some finessing, I think I finally have my adapter bracket so that the housing can sit flush. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and print out just this bracket and see if it actually lines up and sits nicely on the dash and if it does, then I'll combine these two pieces together and print it out as a whole. Uh, I might just glue this onto the top of it, but uh, maybe not. We'll see. Hmm. All right, well, 
Moment of truth. <laughs> well, that didn't work. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's it's close. But it's far from perfect. We got a pretty big gap right in the front here. <laughs> I think it went a little too aggressive on the on the bits right here and here. But you know what? I always knew this was going to be trial and error. I guess definitely got my first error. It looks like actually this contour is pretty accurate though. Look at that. It's not terrible. I mean, you can see it's bouncing around a little bit. And the question is if I put those little sort of valleys there in the right spot how level is it at that point let's have a look not very it's got to be there well actually this doesn't even need to be level but it does need to be about the same i mean at least at least it's the same sort of angle there uh, this way it did need to be level though or at least slightly yeah that's not bad actually so I think the problem here is I went a little too aggressive on these little valleys on the sides. Um, and if I line them up, I mean, it is pretty close to where I want it. I think this one needs to come back a little bit. This actually needs to go back that way a little. And this one here, yeah, see, it's kind of sticking out past the front there a little bit too much. You know what? Not bad for a, a, a first attempt. So, just have to adjust a little bit. The thing I do notice is that if I push this down on the dash, um, it is actually pretty good. Like, I've got the right contour in the front. Uh, it's just, unfortunately, the whole thing... Yeah. You can see the problem there. That's too bad. All right, I finished my second one, and I'm pretty pleased actually with the result. You can see it's not perfect, but once the uh, sort of double-sided adhesive gets in there, that'll fill any of the cracks around it. But you'll see it's actually lining up pretty nicely. Um, on the one side there, I guess it's, yeah, it's got a bit of a crack, uh, a bit of a split right down in there, but it's pretty minor. Uh, the only problem is it's on a bit of an angle, as you can see. Uh, so I'm going to need to sort of back this side off. Oops, sorry, back this side off a little bit. Maybe retract it. Just got to figure out how far back. Because this corner is pretty much perfect. So but the whole thing is on a bit of an angle. If I do line it up straight with the, uh, the front of the console, then it's no longer sitting in there nicely, as you can see. So yeah, just kind of just kind of kind of skew it a little bit. Um, and make it fit a little bit better but it's pretty good i'm uh, pretty pleased with that all right so third print appears to have been a charm i've got pretty tight lines all the way around here uh, sorry about the blurriness there it's kind of hard to get close on that side so this side here you can see it's got a little bit of a gap down here it's not huge um and then a bit of a gap uh, on this end piece as well i can see underneath there i can see underneath on this side as well uh, sorry for the close quarters, guys. Um, I'm thinking, though, if I if I grind down a little bit right here and a little bit down here, I think it'll actually sit really nice and flat. Um, so I think that's probably what I'm going to do. What I will do is incorporate this design into the overall structure, and I think that'll do the trick. Uh, the front looks good, though. All right, so just so you can see where I'm at here, I have changed the back a little bit to have this kind of hook. Hopefully fill in that extra sort of space. And I've incorporated it into the entire housing now. Uh, the, now the way this is going to print out is actually like sort of this. All right, well, there we go. Starting to print. Doing it at a little bit of higher quality now. Hopefully uh, this works out, but here's how it's going to print. So imagine that's the bed platform that you just saw. And it's going to print like that, so I don't have to use any supports or anything. Um, remember, this top bit here was on an angle, 
So hopefully with the fan on, it should be sufficient. I got a big sort of, you know, plastic saver right there and a nice big hole. So with any luck, this should print out fairly smooth. We'll see what happens. It's about a halfway done here. It's been going for about 24 hours. That's the one thing about uh, 3D printing. It's really, really time consuming, unfortunately, uh, to do the print, um, especially on a larger print like this at a relatively high resolution. It's at, at 0.2 um, thickness for every layer, 0.2 of a millimeter. Well, that's a lot of layers, of course, and you can see here on the screen, just over halfway completed. So we get in real close. You can kind of see those layers there, but it's pretty smooth. Yep, oh, seeing another 24 hours. All right, so a quick update. I've got the USB ports glued into place. I've run some wires through this little cover here. This is actually a uh, spot that the dashboard kind of bolts on. Uh, there's a hole conveniently right there. I've run up a couple wires. Now these are, I mean, they're speaker wires, but you can run you can run power through them as well. It's perfectly fine. Um, I managed to fish, the, fish those two down there. I'll use that uh, basically for um, accessory, constant 12 and ground and it doesn't really need much else other than that i can't really think of anything else to hook up to it right at the moment um, you can see i'll also line the bottom here with um, two-sided adhesive there's two types uh, gorilla glue or gorilla brand is terrible by the way uh, the red stuff is 3m uh, 30 pound and that stuff's awesome so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to clean up this whole area with rubbing alcohol make sure that that adhesive sticks nicely and then I'll uh, push the wires through there and place it down. And then eventually I'm going to use uh, black RTV along the edges just to clean it up really nicely. But what I'll do first is put um, painter's tape along the side of it so I don't make a big, big mess of it. So, All right, so next step, clean this. All right, so seeing as my existing stereo's GPS antenna is sort of on that little cover, I figured it, made, it only made sense to put the GPS antenna for this one on this cover so I can actually put that in pretty much exactly the same place as the other one we'll put that there that's held on with uh, two-sided adhesive and then these the uh, GPS wire will basically just follow uh, the other two wires in a moment here as well all right it's in place and yeah you can see the uh, two-sided adhesive along the bottom there it doesn't look too bad in person uh, the flash is really making it pull out the, the light from the camera and you can see there our uh, wiring is just tucked in a little bit. Unfortunately, that was kind of a necessity. Um, it'll be all right. I didn't want to go through the dashboard itself, so that looks fine. I got easy access to the USB ports. And uh, it looks like the screen's going to be behind the steering wheel, but it's not because of where you sit. But also, the steering wheel is up a little bit higher, so I could just put the steering wheel down a bit. But uh, yeah, it's pretty solid. And once I get the black RTV around the outside. Basically, I'm just going to put some tape along here, some tape along here, put the RTV on, go over it with my finger, do that in all four corners or all four sides. Maybe not the back side, maybe just the three sides. That should be all right.
All right, so as you can see, I have it installed. It's now time to finally test it out. I have the, uh, the power connected, and I've even got the illumination wire connected. So let's turn the key and see what happens. All right. <laughs> awesome. So guys, this is my view right now to where the steering wheel is. Um, the steering wheel is a tad low, um, so if I put it up a little bit higher, oh, that's too high, drop it down a bit here. All right, so if I put it up a little bit higher, this is now my view. I've got just a tiny bit of the steering wheel in there. Um, I think that's pretty good. I mean, if I do need to see something that's on the screen, it's not a big deal to just kind of stretch out a little bit and uh, have a better look. Um, but I think that works pretty good. I, I basically just kind of have to do one of these to look at the very bottom of the screen. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to put on the screen, to be quite frank. Uh, it'll probably be um, either navigation or uh, the Torque software, but it is a touch screen as well, so I'll be able to swipe between the different things on the screen. But if you want to see what the navigation looks like there, check it out. I think that looks pretty awesome. And, uh, yeah, I'll just have to remember not to have my hand on the top of the steering wheel. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little mod. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I think it turned out really, really well. Uh, 3D printers are awesome. Honestly, I think everyone should have one, especially anybody who's doing sort of, um, you know, mods to their vehicle and whatnot. So, all right. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe this particular channel is quite new. I've had another channel called Ed's Garage for a long time that's got uh, enough subscribers that I have been able to monetize, but um, please help me out and uh, hit subscribe so I can eventually monetize this channel as well. That'd be awesome. Again, thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and Happy New Year.